you to realize it and live in it. How about that? Acts chapter 10, verse 38, where we're going to start. And uh, we're going to talk about another part of this scripture. And then, uh, and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see where the Lord takes I don't know. It takes several weeks, months. I don't know. God is good, though. Amen. And uh, I appreciate you coming out in this cold weather to church. It would have been easy just to pull up the blanket over you and stay in bed, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh my, that is great. Praise the Lord. So we are blessed. Well, we believe that uh, you also are diligent because you're here. It's not snow up to the waist, but in some places there are. Uh, my dad says in Alabama it's in the 20s. And it had snow flurries, but no accumulation. And that's too cold for me. This is too cold for me. I like the warm But anyway, it's okay. We're, we're, we're thankful for where we live. And um, a lot of people say, well, I like the change of the season, so I, I'm okay with that. But um, at least it doesn't last long here, right? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is good. Thank you, Lord. Well, let me set my stop on the chair now. Let's get going. Praise God. Duke also signals me. But, uh, if I have this, I can just look down and be good to go. All right, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we love you. We thank you for this time together. We thank you for teaching us about your divine help that you paid for for us. And that, Father God, we know that uh, when we know the truth, the truth makes us free. And so today we proclaim freedom and from any sickness, disease, malfunction that the enemy would try to put on our bodies. And we thank you, Lord, that we walk as you walked on this earth, Lord. We do what you tell us to do, what we see you do. And Father, we thank you for revelation knowledge flowing, quickening us, expelling all darkness in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, everybody said, Amen. 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 Acts 10, verse 38, it's our <laughs> scripture that we've been working with the last few Sundays. Uh, today will be the last day of centering on this scripture. We're going to go other places with it. Not leaving the topic of divine help, though. But it says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Now, the first week we were on this scripture, we talked about that. Um, we see the Trinity here. God the Father anointing Jesus the Son with the Holy Ghost. So, in that, we see the complete will of God, and we gave scriptures to you that God healed everyone. Hallelujah. That includes us. Mm -hmm. And so we see it is the will of God for you to be healed. Amen. Not just you, but for all people to be healed. It's very sad that unsaved people refuse to believe, and therefore they stay sick. It's very sad that some church people have been misled and refuse to believe, and they stay sick. But we take the Word of God for what it says, and that is that God is our healer, and He has healed us at Calvary. Praise the Lord. And it is the will of God for us to remain in divine heaven. Are you with me? Yeah. The second thing, which was last week we talked about, was that uh, how many did God heal? He healed them all, right? We, we showed several scriptures, God healed them all, and here it says, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. All, all, say all. All. All, all. that means everyone. So whatever is affliction might be trying to attack you today or in the past or in the future then knowing these two things will help you remain free. 
Number one, it is the will of God for you to walk in divine health. That is the will of perfect will of God. The number two thing is that it's available for all, everyone. Well, that includes you specifically. Because the devil's a master at saying, yeah, I know Wendy got healed, Pastor James got healed, but this is you. And you don't know how bad this is. And that's what he'll tell you. Well, he's a liar. Okay, today we're going to talk about the subject out of this verse that is stated here, that Jesus went about doing good, healing is good, and sickness is bad, healing is good, and that's elementary. And healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So I want to show you that sickness and disease are oppression from the devil. Yes, it is. Okay? Now, I want to make sure you understand that I don't think every sickness and every uh, ailment that you might have is a demon sitting on you. Let me further say it can be. Okay. But it's not in every case. It can be either or. That's why you have to have spiritual discernment. Okay? Yes. You have to be able to hear from God and recognize what's what. Yes. But I do want to make very clear to you that the origin of all sickness and disease is uh, satanic. It's from the devil. Yep. The origin. Okay? Are you alright with that? Yeah. It started in Genesis. Go there with me. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis 1 and 31 says, And God saw everything that He had made, everything that He had made, everything that He had made, and behold, it was very good. Hallelujah. Well, that means everything our God made, this God of the universe that we serve, was good. He didn't have anything bad that he made. Now, James did a short teaching on that to some degree this morning. If you missed Sunday school, you get the uh, CD and watch it online. It'll help you. Then look over to Genesis 3. Sad day in humanity, but it happened. Genesis chapter 3 and, and um, verse 14. This is after they'd eaten of the forbidden fruit. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because you have done this, you're cursed. Say cursed. cursed. <coughs> above all cattle, above every beast of the field, Upon your belly shall you go, and dust shall you eat all the days of your life. Amen. And I'll put enmity between thee and the woman, and yes. between thy seed and her seed. Yes. It shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. That's prophetic. Amen. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Something really bad happened here. And it put the earth under the authority, so to speak, of the enemy. And with that came all the bad things that we now experience. And uh, God didn't leave us helpless, though. He redeemed us through Jesus. Amen. You understand? Amen. But unfortunately, there's a lot of people out there that don't know Jesus, or they choose not to know Jesus, and so therefore they live under this curse. It's ugly. 
And so, thank God Jesus, God knew about this before he created Adam. You understand that? He's all knowing. But his entire goal was the new creation, which is us, that stays with him forever, Amen. eternally. Amen. And so, uh, if you want to know the whys of it, you don't have to ask him when you get up there. But, uh, but this is the way it is. So you might as well accept and understand the laws that this earth works under and abide by them. What happens if you don't abide by the laws of your city? Well, you're either going to get a ticket or you're going to go to jail. You're going to go to the place that holds people who won't be law-abiding citizens. Right? Well, the same way in this laws of this land, spiritually speaking... If you don't operate properly, then you go into bondage. But we are free people because we know how it works. The way we know how it works is by this. Right? Look at Deuteronomy 28. Now, I'll go as quick as I can, but I don't want to go so quick we miss it, okay? So if some of you say, well, I already know all that, Pastor. Well, good. It doesn't hurt to hear it again. I, I have read the Bible through, I don't know how many times, but I still read it through again every year. It's, I've, I've read, I've studied Ephesians countless times, but I still study it more. You hear what I'm saying? This word is alive. I learn something every time I have a heart to learn something. If I say, well, that's just a rerun of a movie there. Well, no, I'm not going to get anything out of that. Except hardness of heart. Deuteronomy 28. Here we have another clear picture of the difference between those who are under the curse and those who are not under the curse. Verse 28, 1 says, It shall come to pass if you will hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God. Be led by the Spirit. To observe and to do all His commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high, hallelujah, above all nations of the earth. In other words, you're going to rise above the natural. All right? You're going to walk in a supernatural realm. And all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If you shall hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. Let me say here that 28, this chapter was written to Old Testament saints. Do you agree? I can glean good things from it, right? Because I'm a New Testament saint, so I've got the Old Testament included, at least parts of it. It's all the Word of God for me. But you understand, I have to understand who it was directed to. And this was telling you that if you obey the law... You'll be blessed. If you disobey the law, you're going to be cursed. Would you agree with me on that? Okay. Well, today, what is the law of God today that we have to obey? It's love, right? It's love. And so, uh, that is everything. So, you love the Lord thy God above everything. With all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. Keep Him first. And love your neighbor as you say. Right? You fulfill that, Jesus said, fulfill all the commandments. Okay. That is the law today. So, Jesus fulfilled this for me. Okay? You understand what I'm saying? Don't, I'm not telling you you can be disobedient and be okay. I'm not teaching you that. But I am saying, legally, Jesus is the fulfillment of hearkening diligently to the voice of the Lord our God and doing absolutely everything that was supposed to be done by the law. He did it. I couldn't do it. You understand? So therefore now, these promises are mine because of Jesus. Are you okay with it? Uh, If you ever misunderstand and have a question, please let me know. Come to me after the service. Call me up. Let's have lunch. Whatever we need to do to make sure you understand what I'm teaching here. I'm not teaching you to be disobedient and be okay. That's not what I'm saying. Okay? But I am saying that technically Jesus fulfilled this for you. You couldn't, even if you tried. It's good to try, but you couldn't do it. Jesus had to do it for you. All right, thank God for that. Now, it says here, I'm going to be blessed in the city, I'm going to be blessed in the field, my fruit of my body is blessed, 
foot to the ground, and then work of my hand. I'm blessed coming in, I'm blessed going out. The enemies that rise up against me, look at verse 7, look at verse 7. The Lord shall cause your enemies that rise up against you to be spitting before your face. I would say flu is an enemy. It's it is. my enemy. I would say cancer is an enemy. I would say um, arthritis is an enemy. I would say AIDS is an enemy. Uh, so these enemies, then we're talking about divine health, so I bring that up. These enemies of sickness and disease that rise up against you, they'll be smitten before your face. Amen. That's good news. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They may come at you one way, but guess what? Because you know who you are in Christ Jesus, they'll flee from you seven ways. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And so, verse 8 said, He'll command His blessing upon you. God's commanded His blessing upon you. Can you do you see that? Yes. He's commanded His blessing upon you. That's awesome. Okay, but now for the people who don't understand their covenant rights, the rest of the chapter, which is quite a bit longer than the first 14 verses of blessings, is the curse. And it talks about how you'll be cursed. And in other words, it's telling you you'll live under terrible circumstances. Um. Verse uh, 27, the Lord will smite you with the botch of Egypt, with the hemorrhoids, with the scab, with the itch, whereof you cannot be healed. Amen. Now, the reason I read that verse, because whereof you cannot be healed is an incurable disease. Okay? So, the people under the curse, which is definitely the world system, unsaved people, but also can be Christians without knowledge. Hosea 4, 6. They perish for them. So Christians who don't realize who they are in Christ, then they can experience these things. Shouldn't experience them, but they can. And one of them is here, an incurable disease. Right there, it's listed. Verse 32, your sons and your daughters will be given to another people, and your eyes will look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there will be no might in thy hand. In other words, our kids are... That's under the curse is why I'm saying this. Because when you understand you're not under the curse, you have a, 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 a strength in you, spiritually speaking, revelation ought to rise up and say every time the devil reminds you what that child is doing, to say, but I'm not under the curse. And so he's covered, or she's covered, and I don't go by what I see. God brought them back. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right, I'll just do that in. It's not really in your healing, but I thought it was good. All right. And so, verse 41 says the same thing. If we get sons and daughters, shall not enjoy them, for they go into captivity. All right. And so, going down here. Uh, by the way, for the murmurers and complainers, verse 47 says, one that applies. Because you serve not the Lord your God with joyfulness and with the gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. In other words, people who find fault with everything under the curse. Okay? Verse 61. In case you read all these and you don't find the ailment that's attacking you, and so you say, but it's not included there, Pastor. Verse 61 says also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. All right? Are you with me? Yeah. What I'm saying to you is that the truth has made you free. The truth is that Jesus Christ has delivered you from this curse. Thank you, Lord. From the Adamic state. He's the second Adam. He's one. Okay, so if he's done that, then legally, you don't have to have these things. And you, with a knowledge that you don't have to have them, then you can stand against them and win. Because you are the winner. Amen. Because Jesus already won. Are you with me? Yes. Well, look in Ephesians. Chapter 1. 
chapter 2. Many people would say, but Pastor, there are bugs and things in the air. That I can't help it. They just come. I get them. I used to think that way. Well, let's look at where the source of it is. Ephesians 2 2 says, Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the, look at this, what is referred to as the devil here, the prince of the power of the air. You see, when you breathe in, you, you, there's germs you can breathe in. You understand that, right? The prince of the power of the air is at work. That's where the contagious things come from. But what I'm telling you this morning is truth. Truth that you don't have to have. Them. They're out there. We don't, we're not Christian scientists denying evil or denying sickness. It's out there. It kills people. We've seen its devastating effects. We're telling you that you are supernatural in the sense that Jesus is your redeemer. He's redeemed you from that lifestyle. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, you have authority over the prince of the power of the air. Now, if you don't realize that, you'll never use it. You see what I'm saying? You'll never uh, demand flu to go because you just think, well, it's, it's in the air. I just, this time of year, I get it. You know? I had somebody sneezed when I was in the room and I caught it. I had the grandbabies come over and they were all stuffy nose. And so I got it. Well, these are reasonable excuses to the world, but you're not of the world anymore. Glory to God. It said He's going to place you high above all nations. He means He's going to cause you as the nation of Israel, as the Christian nation, to rise above what happens to the earthly nations. Amen. Well, part of what happens to the earthly nations is sickness and disease and death. Amen. Hello? Amen. Y'all out there this morning? Yeah, yeah. 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 Praise the Lord. All right, well, in Exodus 15, 26, I didn't bring my American translation, but we'll read it out of the King James. Exodus 15, uh, and then I'm going to tell you what it says out of American translation. And American translation. Exodus 15, verse 26. One of my favorite verses. And said, if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, and will do that which is right in His sight, will give ear to His commandments, and keep all His statutes, just think of love here, okay? I will put none of these diseases upon you which I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Okay. Now, the, an American translation says that he has made us immune to all the diseases. I like that better. I mean, this is good too. But look it up if, if you don't believe me. It's first in my 26th translation Bible, but then I bought the Bible off of Amazon. I don't know if it's still a print anymore because I had to get a used one, but I got the Bible. And... Uh, and sure enough, in there, it says that He has made us immune to the diseases. Amen. Now, I had to use that one time. When I first found that, uh, I was headed overseas, and uh, everybody in the house was sick, I've told you before. And they were all railing me, saying, you're going to get it, you're going to get it, you can't possibly be here without getting it. And, uh, and I stood on that verse and never got it. And I, my mind told me, you're going to get on that plane, you're going to be barfing on that plane, you're going to be a thousand miles, thousands of miles from home, you're going to be sick. You know, that's what your mind is lying to you, see, but it is a liar. Look at Psalm 67. What I'm saying is that you, you've got to get, some of these scriptures I'm reading, you know, it doesn't take all of them, but you, you it's good to have them all. But grab hold of one or two of them. And let it really get deep in your heart so that when the challenges come, you have some arsenal ready Amen. to say to the devil, no, no, no. Right. Now let me also say to you that since I began teaching this, maybe four weeks ago, I've had various attacks 
physically come at my body. And uh, I've had an opportunity to use what I'm teaching you. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And, uh, Amen. And oh, yeah. and so you never get to the level where the devil doesn't try you. He's going to try you. You're going to wait for more. The, the issue is, can you handle him in the smaller things? Because when the big ones come, if you haven't conquered him in the little things, you're going to have a real issue trying to conquer him on the big ones. And uh, we do live in a cursed earth, and the enemy does come at us with demonic activity. What did I say? Psalm 67? Yeah. Verse 2? Look at this now. That thy way may be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. That's him saying to us, he wants you well so you can show everybody the goodness of God. A lifestyle lived Mm -hmm. without having been sick is a great testimony. It's a great testimony that if you got sick and then you got healed, you can testify about it. That's a good thing too. But how much greater is the testimony if you never had it at all? You know? And the older you get, the longer you've been here on planet Earth, the more opportunities had to put something on you. You hear what I'm saying? We don't take it, do we? Nope. Nope. Glory to God. Well, we're talking about the fact that, that um, the devil is the origin yes. of sickness and disease. Mm-hmm. And let's look at a few scriptures along this line where, where the Lord actually cast demons out and called it healing. Amen. Okay? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. All right. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. We'll we'll start with 23. Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness, all manner of disease among the people. Verse 24. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torment. And those that which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy. And what did he do? He healed them. them. So here he's referring to a possession, demonic possession, and still healing process. All right? You okay with that? What I'm saying is that Satan is the author of sickness and disease, mm-hmm. all sickness and disease. He's not necessarily camped out on somebody when they have something, but he can be. In either event, God called it, referred to it as healing when he commanded them to go. Whether it was just healing the sick or casting out a devil, mm-hmm. he called it healing. Amen. Amen. Because if you got a demon, you may be sick in your mind with a demon. Right. You understand? Yeah. I mean, Manatee, Glenn is full of them. Willie goes over there ministers. Yeah. I used to go over there. And uh, there's people whose mind is out of control. They don't know how to control their mind. So the mind is in charge, and so they go off base. And uh, it's demonic activity. Is it a right. devil? Are they possessed? 